Hello, Wonder Hussy here, out in an exceptionally remote and mysterious part of Nevada. This is one of the most desolate areas I've ever been to. I camped here last night on the top of this sagebrush knoll in the middle of this vast, 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 vast sagebrush mm, basin. And where I'm going today, it's just gonna get even more desolate. That's right, as if my campsite last night wasn't remote enough, I've got plans to head someplace even more remote than this. Matter of fact, I'm headed to an area that's, oh gosh, I think it's supposed to be one of the most desolate areas in the lower 48 states of the United States of America. And well, there's a town up here in particular that I think has the distinction of being the most geographically isolated community in the lower 48 states. That's right, it's a town called Jarbage. Not garbage, Jarbage. J-A-R-B-I-D-G-E. <laughs> well, according to another website I read, it's an unfortunate anglicization of the Native American term for the area, which was something like Jahapitz. But the white tongue can't pronounce it, so the first white man that rolled into Jarbage thought it sounded like Jarbage, and well, that's why we call it Jarbage. I've had people telling me I should come up here for years, and for whatever reason, I never got around to it until now. Now I'm at a point where I really just wanna go be someplace ultra desolate. Uh, I've got about 12 more days on this trip before I have to head down to Vegas and start packing up all my belongings and move into my Death Valley compound. And well, I'm not gonna have any time to myself down there. So I wanted to be alone one last time and if you want to be alone, well, there's really no better place than up here in the Jarbage Wilderness. Now, technically, I'm not even sure I'm in the actual Jarbage Wilderness area yet. Uh, I rolled in yesterday kind of late in the evening. I didn't have a ton of daylight left, so I just needed a place to pull over and camp. So I took this little side road onto this little knoll here and well, that's how I ended up here. But now I'm about to get in my rig and travel the rest of the way to the most geographically isolated town, I think permanently populated town in the lower 48 and see for myself if it's as cool as they say. Okay, wow. This is friggin' spectacular. I'll be honest, uh, I didn't just come up here because I wanted to be alone someplace desolate. I also came up here because, well, somebody told me this is one of the most beautiful places in Nevada, and it was up when I was in the Ruby Mountains by uh, Lamoille Canyon. And so it was a pretty strong statement coming from someone in that area. He said it looks like the Alps up here. And boy, howdy, I guess it kind of does, far out. Oh my God, I'm never gonna get there if I have to keep stopping every five minutes to look at how amazingly beautiful this place is. Look at this gorgeous Alpine Lake and these forests of aspen trees and fir trees all around it. Man, this really does look like the Northern Rockies and huh, it feels like the Northern Rockies. It's actually pretty chilly up here. I better put on something a little bit warmer. There, much better. Okay, so while we're driving along, might as well fill you in on a little bit of the history of Jarbage. Uh, it was a gold mining town. Uh, there was actually one of the last gold strikes in the West, 1909. Some dude found a bunch of gold and soon enough there was like 2,000 people swarmed down into this very isolated remote canyon. Ooh, elevation 8,500, I just saw a sign. No wonder it was chilly. Okay, wow, according to this sign, well, there's a couple noteworthy things. Uh, one, yes, we are up at like 8,500 feet. Brr. Two, accor according to the sign, this class one air shed has some of the most pristine air in the United States. 
well, you can probably hear my engine running. It's probably not that pristine right here, but oh my gosh, all around, it's friggin' awesome. And hey, maybe you can sort of feel what I feel. If I take a deep breath, you'll be able to breathe this beautiful mountain air with me. Ready? Wow, that is fresh. Anyway, there's actually a third interesting thing on this sign that I forgot to mention, and that is, so the name Jarbage is a bastardization of the Shoshone Native American term, Jahabich, I guess. Well, Jahabich actually means monster that lurks in the canyon. I guess the Native Americans had some myth about some fearsome beast who lived down in that canyon there. In fact, the canyon is, I think it's pretty narrow. Jarbage is at the bottom of this canyon and it gets choked with snow just about every winter. And some winters it's so bad that the people get snowed in and can't even get out to get fresh supplies. Like I was reading that back in 1917, I think, they were snowed in for months. I think they couldn't get any food. Their supplies were running low. And then finally somebody came in from the north from uh, Twin Falls, Idaho. Cause that's where we are. If you look at a map, we're in Nevada, but we're way, 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 way up, almost at the Idaho border. I think Jarbage is only about 10 miles from Idaho. So the closest town is actually Twin Falls, Idaho. I came up from Elko, which is like a eh, hundred miles back down south. There's nothing else closer. In fact, there aren't any paved roads at all within 20 miles of Jarbage. I guess that's why they say it's such a desolate place. Anyway, like I was saying before I got distracted, uh, it was a gold mining town. Gold discovered in 1909. <laughs> Canyon was flooded with people, but I guess even back then it was already considered part of the Forest Service. I didn't realize the Forest Service was around that long, but uh, that made it problematic for the miners to build cabins and whatnot because it was technically federal land and they had to ask permission to cut down the trees. And well, they couldn't just clear cut the forest like they did in a lot of other ghost towns. So I don't know, they worked that out one way or another. Uh, and I think the mine, the gold mine operated, well, it operated up at least till World War I. They, uh, what I read, they took apart the, a lot of the mining stuff for the war effort. But I think, uh, I think the gold mine might actually have started up again. The last information I found was as of 2013. They said they were thinking of mining for gold again. Uh, it's 2021 now, so <laughs> if I know them mining corporations, I'll bet you anything they're already a mining again. Anyway, <laughs> I guess Jarbage is considered to be one of the most beautiful mining camps left and certainly one of, if not the most, remote. Uh, that is as far as still inhabited mining camps go. Okay, I think we're almost to Jarbage. And here's how I know. Well, two ways actually. First, the sign tells me three more miles to go. But then look at this. This sign says Elko County RS 2477 road number 748. Now, what does all that mean? <laughs> well, believe it or not, this little road here that we're standing on was the site of what well, was like na national news, maybe even international news. It was one of the one of them, their anti big government uprisings. I guess what happened is well, Jarbage is very isolated. There's only a couple roads in and out. They're dirt roads. So when it snows in the winter, sometimes the roads can get blocked, washed out. Well, that's what happened here. Road got washed out, I think in 1995. And instead of repairing it, the Forest Service, which I guess maintains all, this, all these lands, uh, they refused to repair the road because they said repairing the road would just hasten erosion and would threaten the already dwindling population of bull trout in i guess there's a river or creek running through here so they're trying to protect this trout they didn't want to re rebuild the road or repair it so they just put a big boulder in the middle of it to block it and well i guess that pissed off a lot of people in jarbage because this is one of the only roads in and out of their town and they felt like why should the forest service have anything to say about their town in their county in their state of nevada it was one of those situations so there was a big to-do uprising. Uh, I think it took all the way until the year 2000, maybe 99. On Independence Day, 4th of July, like 300 locals and supporters showed up. They called themselves a shovel brigade. They all had shovels and ropes and they moved the boulder aside and I think they fixed the road themselves. And I don't think the Forest Service was too happy about that. Uh, and it went back and forth in court for a long time. I think it actually just recently got resolved uh, and I don't remember, it, it, it all came down to semantics, basically, like this 2477 
that just me that refers to a line in the the laws regarding mining there's some provision in mining law that even if a mine is on federally owned land the mining company has a right to build a road on it even though it's federal land something like that i don't quite understand it 100 percent, so don't quote me on that you can look it up but that's what rs2477 refers to and because there's a gold mine in garbage that was the argument they made and the resulting court i feel like it was one of those results that kind of either both sides felt like they won or both sides felt like they lost <laughs> not sure anyway let's get back in the car and go the rest of the few miles to this hardcore wild west living ghost town Okay, wow, there's really not a whole lot to this town. It kind of seems like it's mostly people's vacation homes and a few bars. <laughs> and unfortunately, I'm trying to cut back on my drinking, <laughs> so there won't be any saloon time for me. But check this out. I happened to notice as I was driving along, there's a big shovel. <laughs> Look at that, that's what I was just talking about with the um, garbage shovel brigade. These are the people that came out and fixed the road and pulled the boulder out of the way. Oh, look at this is interesting. Okay, so first of all, the Nevada United Four Wheelers Association was part of this. There's the Jarbridge Brigade. The Blue Ribbon Coalition, preserving our natural resources for the public, not from the public. And then I'm not sure what this top one is. Freedom isn't free, get involved. A-B-A-T-E, abate of Northern Nevada. No more road lists. Wow, that's actually, pretty impressive oh and then it looks like there's more names and stuff I guess of people who are part of the shovel brigade but you can hardly read it they're etched into this metal but it's really faint okay well like I said I don't really want to go in a saloon <laughs> so I'm hoping there's just some like historical stuff we can poke around here like here's a sign on this rock this must be something oh I see this is the rock they moved oh my gosh this is the rock they moved out of the road look Liberty Rock on the 4th of July 2000 this rock was pulled from the South Canyon Road by people power thank you to the Forest Service for letting it be on display here oh well that's nice it makes it kind of sound like they almost figured out a way to get along I don't know if that's really the case huh let's see what this other sign says oh it just talks about the history of garbage in 1908 Congress established the Humboldt National Forest oh I see so the National Forest was established about a year before that guy discovered gold here and then it just kind of goes and talks about everything I already told you but I didn't mention that after the initial boom, the population of Jarbage rarely exceeded 200. In fact, I don't even know if there's 200 people that live here now. Probably not. Uh, but it talks about what kind of stuff there used to be here. Then the mines closed in the 30s after producing about $10 million in gold. Oh, and I forgot to mention the last stagecoach robbery in the West actually happened here too. Uh, I guess technically it wasn't a stagecoach. It was a wagon. It was a stage wagon. But yeah, some bad hombre shot and killed the driver, stole all the mail, and all the money. And that was right here in little old garbage. Look at this park. Okay, right next to Liberty Rock, there's this really beautiful grassy little shady park for kids to play on, and then there's this really cool old mining equipment in it. It's kind of neat. Look at these beautiful flowers. Oh my god, you definitely know we are not in regular Nevada. Oh, you know what I mean? Like this stuff doesn't grow down where I come from. We're basically more in Idaho than we are in Nevada. Okay, well, I left my car running, but I guess I don't have to worry about it in a town like this. It looks like there might be some old historic ruins over here. It says Log Cabin Bar, and then it says Mint Bar, and then it says Palm Bar. I don't know if that was like three different saloons that used to be here back in the heyday. What is this? Oh, wow, look at this, a murder walk. Oh, this is the guy who robbed the stagecoach, Ben Cool, and he was not cool and his partner, Cut Lip Swede, who you can see was named that because he was Swedish and had a scar on his lip. Well, those were the dudes that robbed the stagecoach. And if only I was gonna be here September 4th, I could go on this murder walk. That'd be so much fun. And then it looks like this is a t used to be a tailor's shop, maybe. Is it restored? I can't really see. Wow, this place is interesting. Like I thought it was gonna be a little bit more touristy where there was like 
more signs and historical stuff. I think there are a few more down the road there. That is really cool though, that they have the rock on display, the actual rock and this giant shovel. But I feel like if it was me, I would have wanted to put the rock right there by the shovel. <laughs> okay, let's get back in the car and drive a little bit farther down the road. I think I saw some historical stuff up there. Such a cute little town though. I mean, especially right now in the summertime, like look, here's a little stand where they sell eggs and camp firewood. <laughs> What well, says they're out of eggs? Hens on holiday. <laughs> but I bet this place is cold and snowy in the winter. Okay, there's a little store. It looks like you might be able to buy souvenir shovels. And then look, here's the old historic Jarbage Jail. Built after the town was removed from the US forest by a 1911 presidential proclamation. Oh, okay, so I guess they got out of that. A colorful story tells of a burly miner frequently using the bunk to raise the roof to slip out and return to the saloon, climbing back in his cell before morning. <laughs> then it says the most noted prisoner was Ben Cool, the guy who robbed the stagecoach. Well, let's go inside and see what's... Oh, wow, this is super cool. I've been in a lot of these uh, old restored jails and this is by far the coolest because look, they even put like little books on the table. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this really cool old stove. I love the colors. And then I guess these are like the old files, for the, the prisoner records, I'm guessing. Oh my God, look, are these like genuinely from 1918? Wow, if that's the case, I can't believe they just have them out like this. Like they're not even behind plexiglass or anything. That's pretty impressive. This is cool, man. This is like a hands-on restored jail. Look at all these old bottles. Old wash basin, an old timey lunchbox, an old clothes ringer, an old Jägermeister bottle. <laughs> I'm sure that was their favorite drink back then. And there's another stove over on that side. And then I guess this was like the electrical stuff. Oh my gosh. I'm not an electrician, obviously, but does that look old or what? <laughs> okay, let's go inside the cells. This is my favorite part, look at this. Okay, first of all, cute little quilt on the bed. Secondly, ball and chain, like from the cartoons. <laughs> Holding the prisoner in place so he can't get out. <laughs> I wonder if that's supposed to be old Ben Cool. Oh, and then the other room must be Cut Lip Swede. Let's go check the other room. Oh, looks like Cut Lip Swede to me. <laughs> Oh my god, look, he's got a, well, he doesn't have a cute quilt, just a real scuzzy old 70s blanket. But he's got both his feet shackled to that ball and chain. Oh, look, they gave him a little, oh, this is his, his outhouse, his potty. I was going to say it's like a little tuffet, but it's supposed to be his toilet. Oh, that big rig out front just started up and it's gassing me out. <laughs> got to get out of here. Oh, you know what, I think that's actually the sewage truck. It's pumping out the septic as it smells <laughs> unspeakably foul. Let me get out of here. Okay, look, here's the trading post. It says, best little storehouse in Jarbage, Nevada. <laughs> All right, let's go in. Okay, just a small little store, just like you would expect. Anything you need for camping, fireball, whiskey, <laughs> a gun. Oh my god, I love stores like this. Just a little bit of everything that you might need when you're camping. Okay, I had to get a t-shirt. <laughs> you know, I want to support the local economy, so I got a really cool garbage sticker. I wish it said the best little store house in Nevada, but uh, if you're watching this, people who run this trading post, you should make that sticker. Then I also got a little shirt. Where the pavement ends, the fun begins. Jarbage, Nevada. I just unloaded 40 bucks in Jarbage and I've only been here 10 minutes. Okay, that's pretty much all there is to the town of Jarbage, unless you feel like getting drunk in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Uh, I didn't see any ruins or evidence of where the old gold mine was, where gold was discovered here. But that's okay because, well, I came up here for two reasons. One, because it's supposed to be spectacularly beautiful which so far, yes, it has been. And two, because it's supposed to be super desolate. So I think what I wanna do now, rather than hang around in the saloon, is go find a beautiful, desolate place to camp. 
and just enjoy this beautiful wilderness. <laughs> okay, well I finally found a place to camp and it's actually pretty dramatic. Uh, what I did is I drove up from the canyon down there. That's the canyon where the river runs through and Jarbidge is back around the corner there about mm, 20, 30 miles, I guess. And yeah, I did sort of feel like I should camp down in the gorge, like in Jarbidge or near Jarbidge. But it was so cold last night and I wasn't even in Jarbidge and I looked up the weather forecast for Jarbidge. It was supposed to be 39 degrees at night. So I wussed out. I came out of the beautiful lush green river canyon. And yes, I did see some really nice campsites right along the river that I could have stayed at. But you know me, I'm a desert gal. I came up here on top of the Mesa hoping I could get a really badass overview. Uh, of the whole Jarbidge Canyon. Unfortunately, I really couldn't. This is the best I could do. Hey, if nothing else, it beats sleeping in that old Jarbidge jail. <laughs> <laughs> 